heat and drought, good water management pays back many times over. Across British Columbia in the summer of 2021, heat waves severely punished many farms. But farms with well-tuned irrigation were more resilient. To irrigate any crop, the goal is always the same. Go into the season with good soil moisture and keep it there by adding the right amount of water at the right time evenly to all the roots. Whether you use drip, sprinklers or guns, getting that even distribution of water all starts with a good design. It's also vital to maintain your equipment, to patch leaks, clean filters, flush lines, replace gaskets and nozzles, and so on. But even a perfect system can waste water and wreck crops, unless there's a schedule to match the weather and a keen eye on the soil to adjust that schedule. I recently visited two cherry farms down the road from each other, each using drip irrigation to grow the same varieties on the same soils. They are both good farms and knowledgeable in tree health and fruit production. But one farm monitors their soil moisture, so they knew by March that it was unusually dry. They started to irrigate in April, weeks ahead of normal, and kept their trees' roots evenly moist with a well-paced schedule. In late June, when our region baked under intense heat, their consistent, even soil moisture kept the trees stress-free. Fruit were smaller than in a typical season, but relatively few were poor quality. Next door, the other farm was caught unprepared. Roots were already dry when irrigation started in late May. The soil, a silty clay loam, can be difficult to get wet again. In the heat wave, fruit shriveled and stunted on stressed trees. Irrigation was turned on around the clock, but it was too late. If you go into peak season behind, it's almost impossible to catch up. Here, water runs off dry soil rather than soaking in. The fast application rate of these spitters far outpaces the dry, bare soil's ability to absorb water, so it pours off the surface, even on a gentle slope. If this system had been automated, then short, frequent pulses of water might have slowly soaked into the hard pan below without running off. Trees did do better in depressions where water pooled, and in sandy soils that were able to get wet again more easily. It's not just cherry farms. Across the region this summer, yellow fields and low yields often told the story of irrigation that started late on stressed plants in dry soil. In the heat, plants must be irrigated more frequently, and on sandy, rocky, thin or lifeless soils that can't hold as much water, irrigation has to cycle around even faster. Without scheduling, stressful cycles of overwatering and underwatering can happen in any irrigation system, but both can be fixed with one eye on the weather and one eye on the soil. In this series on irrigation scheduling, we'll look closely at what it takes to use water wisely in roller coaster weather. We'll show you how to answer those most fundamental questions. How much water does my crop need? and how often do I need to apply it? We'll step through the fundamental weather watching and soil monitoring skills that every farm can use to irrigate the right amount of water at the right time. As water sources diminish in the future, these same tools and skills will become even more critical to grow the best crop with every drop. And to do that, our goal is simple. Go into the season with good soil moisture and keep it there all season long.